Sex. Making love. Fucking. Fooling around. Doing the deed. Intercourse. Screwing. Netflix and chill. <laughs> we joke about it, yet take it too seriously when we're the ones doing it. And today, I want to try this experiment with the lot of you. So stand up and stay up if you've ever experienced any one of these. <laughs> Paused wind. Clenching butt cheeks whilst in the act in order to stop yourself from doing it still counts. <laughs> Queefed. Also known as vagina farts. When the air that's trapped in your vagina decides to come out all at the same time, making the most awkward noises at the worst time possible. That's when she says, that wasn't a fart. <laughs> Fell dramatically whilst trying a different position. Stand up and stay up if you ever had problems putting it in or got cramps at the worst time ever. Stand up and stay up if you ever tried to ignore the need to pee because it was such an intimate moment. Can we have some lights? Well, this is very interesting because most of the things I mentioned are things that every couple goes through whilst having any form of vaginal or anal sex. Yet, so many few people stood up. Some of them, I would say, are actual natural reactions to doing the deed. And this is exactly my point. Society keeps trying to glorify sex. It has to be mind-blowing. Otherwise, we believe we're not compatible. And what's this thing of everything having to be mind-blowing anyway? How was the food at the restaurant? Good, not mind-blowing. How was your first date with Matthew? Good but I wasn't blown away. How's the sex? Pretty good, but not mind-blowing, if you know what I mean. Think of movies, TV shows that you've watched or currently showing, watching. Think of the sex scenes in those movies. You see exclusively young adults with athletic bodies, white, and heterosexual. And the further away you go from that ideal, the more gross it's portrayed as. Think, for example, of a movie scene where you have two fat people having sex. Is it a sexy scene? Or is it a comical scene? How many sex scenes have you seen with older people getting it on? And people with physical disabilities, do they ever have sex on the movies? We are seeing an increase of both male and females who come to the clinic because they feel anxious before a date. Not your normal anxious, panic attacks. And this is in line with research that polled 2,000 people in the UK and found 
that the largest affected age of group of men with erectile difficulties is men in their 30s, 50% of which are experiencing problems with achieving or maintaining an erection before penetration. And in sex therapy, we know that the main cause of that, achieving or maintaining an erection until penetration, is performance anxiety. It's like dating is becoming a performance where the connection is, ju is judged on the sexual encounter. Research is telling us that 15-year-old females feel the need to give oral pleasure during their first encounter. Otherwise, they believe that their male counterparts will not be interested in what they have to say for the rest of that date. The problem with people being judged on their sexual performance is that now we have a script that we are being compared against. Our intimacy, our sex life has become pornified. It's like sex has to be perfect, athletic, mind-blowing. Our bodies must be sex ready, just like they need to be beach ready. In Australia, they're studying girls who go to hospitals complaining with the way that their vagina looks. The average age of girls who go to hospital, girls, because of labiaplasty, because they're interested in labiaplasty, labia is the vaginal lips, is 14.5 years old. Girls as young as 11 years old are complaining about how their vagina looks. That's not even the saddest part of this research. 25% of these girls have been referred on to the hospital by their own mothers. Their mothers are concerned about how their daughter's vaginas look. People, come on. The queefs, the farts, the insecurities, the smells, the bodily malfunctions, this is what makes sex real. Let's talk about our quirks. Let's talk about sex more. Let's normalize something that we all do and go through. Quirks and weird things are considered such until we realized that we all do them, that we all go through them. And this reminds me of a couple I was seeing quite some years ago now. Lovely couple, very genuine individuals. And their presenting problem was that they felt that they were not satisfied in bed, that they were scared that they are not compatible. It took us a lot of sessions, and we couldn't get to the bottom of it. So I said, Let's, let me see you individually for one session. When I did that, I made this discovery. Individually, they were more comfortable talking about their fantasies, about their wishes in the bed. They had the same fantasies. And they were more comfortable talking to a stranger than their own partner of 15 years. And this is because they felt that they would be judged by their own partner. The dangers of silence when it comes to sex is 
that we ponder in silence. Comparing our bodies to what we see on social media. The same social media where excellence and perfection are being portrayed as the norm. Where good is no longer good enough. We are told what is beautiful. We are told what is normal, what is weird, what is quirky. In silence, we feel bad about ourselves. For the first time, there was a 39% increase of labiaplasty in one hospital in the UK, which means that is 12,000 procedures. Shame, an incredible 27% of men say they would rather break up with their own partner instead of going to their GP to talk about their problems achieving an erection. We are being made to feel ashamed of having, having bodily malfunctions which are the norm. We will all have bad days when it comes to sexual arousal. We will all experience queefs and farts whilst having sex. Yet, we are being made to feel different. My therapy room has taught me that when it comes to sex and sexuality, we are all worrying about the same things. Most of us want the same things. We're just all very scared to talk about them with each other. And this is what makes us feel weird and quirky. So, talk about your quirks. Worst thing that can happen is that the repressed people in the room will judge you for it. But you know what? Chances are that the same repressed people were judging you before anyway. <laughs> On the other hand, the best thing that can happen out of this is that you feel accepted. You might feel loved for who you are. Queefs, farts, and all. You might learn that you are enough. That it's okay not to be perfect. That it's okay not to have a perfect life. Not to have a perfect body. You might realize it's okay not to be an actor in the sack. So my concluding message for you is queef, fart, have sex, enjoy your bodies, and that of others too. I am Matthew Bartolo from the Willingness Team, and I want to hear about your quirks. Thank you.